Today, we're gonna to take two of these Dallas sensors, these temperature sensors, and one of these ESP8266 boards. We're gonna tie them together and we're gonna monitor my heat sink for my power supply and my two-way radio that is sitting in the attic. So let's build up this contraption and show you how it works. Okay, so we're gonna put this together. Uh, I've already taken the wires and, and tied them together, and I'm gonna show you the whole soldering setup and how I connected to the ESP8266 board here in just a second. When I talk about doing this, by the way, I'm talking about doing this uh, for my heat sink on my radios and my power supply. And the reason I do this is because where they're sitting in the attic, it gets super hot. And I wanna make sure that I'm monitoring the temperature, especially of the radio heat sink. I have it tied to a system that has the potential to transmit for long periods of time. And I wanna make sure I'm not doing damage to the radio. In addition, I can add a power switch, uh, like one of my Tasmoda switches, to the power supply. And if it gets to be where it's too hot, or, or I'm out of town or something and I can't get up there and physically deal with it, I can shut the power off. So it's a, it's got a good use case. I can also set automation to do that if it gets to be above a certain temperature for too long. You can also use these things in a refrigerator-freezer combo, uh, anywhere that you... Uh, anywhere you can use the temperature sensors. And the reason I chose the Dallas temperature sensors over some others that'll do the same thing is because of this right here. It measures temperature from minus 55 degrees Celsius to 125 degrees Celsius, or minus 67 Fahrenheit to 257 degrees Fahrenheit. That will work in your freezer and it'll work in the attic and anywhere in between. It's just a very wide range of uh, temperature uh, sensing ability and it won't die in the freezer uh, where some of my other thermostats just can't work there. The other cool thing is you can take one ESP board and you can tie it into the sensors for both of these things in the freezer and refrigerator. So that's why I chose these. They have a very wide temperature sensor and a very uh, the ability to have a very wide tolerance so I can put them in the frozenest or coldest places as well as the hottest places such as my attic. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and get started with the soldering. Part of this, I'll show you how I put it together on the board, how I solder it to the board, which pins I'm using, and then after that, we'll talk about how we get it programmed into the ESP8266. So let's run over to the soldering bench and get started. Okay, so I've saved you the, the heartache of watching me try to attach these wires together, uh, short of the soldering part. So we're gonna do some soldering here in just a minute. So what you can see here, I hope, it's kind of blurry for some reason, my camera won't focus on this very well, but what you have here is you have uh, the data wires, and I've got two sensors together, of course. I'm gonna be running both of these sensors at the same time on the same input. So I've got two of the Dallas sensors, and I'm tying them together onto one ESP board. And so you have right here, focus, you have uh, the data wires tied together, and then you have the, uh, the voltage, plus voltage or positive voltage, uh, then in this case, it's going to be three volts tied together. And there's a 4.6 uh, K ohm resistor between the data lead and the, uh, and the power. That's the drop resistor. And that's just a requirement to make this work since we're just feeding it with one data sensor or one data line. And then we have our ground wires here are tied together. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to just solder all this together. We're gonna cut this back to where it will uh, solder onto the board, the ESP board. And then we're gonna go ahead and put some sh some shrink wrap or some, uh, yeah, some shrink wrap on here. So it's a little bit, a little bit more protected. So let's do some soldering real quick. And if you don't wanna watch me solder, you can fast forward this part, but we're gonna throw a little solder on it. Oh, look, it actually focuses when I solder, how nice. So I'll throw a little solder just to make sure everything stays together. Okay, there's a little there. A little solder on this one. Okay, that's nice. And then we'll solder this one together as well. And you don't want a lot of solder on this. You just want enough to get it together because it's gonna to have to go through the little holes on the board. All right, so we'll give that a second to cool down. And that's gonna be all soldered together. All right, that's all soldered together. Now we're gonna do is put a little bit of sheet, uh, 
shrink wrap on this so that we can shrink it up whenever we get onto the board. And then we'll put a little bit on these two leads as well and leave a little bit of space here on both of these so that we can, uh, we can get them into the ESP board. Okay, so the length of the of the heat shrink doesn't have to be that long. We're just going to kind of cover up this section. So for this, I'm just going to cut enough heat shrink. Um, we may need another size here. I may need to go to the bigger size. Let me grab a bigger size for that one. All right, so we're going to use this heat shrink here. And we're going to cut it just back enough to make it fit on there. And we'll just slide it back on here. Actually, we'll use this piece. And that'll be enough to cover that up. We want to put it on here before we actually put the, um, the solder on it. You won't be able to get it past that. We're going to do the same thing for these other two. Just cut a little bit of piece, cut a little piece for each one of those so we can shield it. And of course, there's probably better ways to do this, but this is the way I'm going to do it. Let me just make sure that's, that's still a little bit too long. So cut it back a little bit more and we'll slide it on there. And the same thing goes for this other side. We'll cut a little piece on there and slide it on. We'll just slide it over here. Now these may not stay on until I actually start doing something with the board. So we'll just show you where they're gonna go and then they may not stay on there until we're ready to put them on. This one definitely will stay. So let's go ahead and pull these wires off of here. And what we're gonna do is we're going to use this board, this ESP board. And the, the points we're gonna use or the terminals or whatever, we're going to use the, um, the three volt here. And I'm trying to get it to focus, but it just doesn't want to focus. There we go. There's a three volt line here. That's where our power is going to come from. And then down here on this side is our ground. And then right next to it is, or over here on D2, which is GPIO4. That's what we're going to use. We're going to use GPIO4 and then three volts and ground. And those are the three, three leads that we have here. So I'm going to start with the easiest one. I'm going to start with ground. And we don't need this super long uh, cable here. So let's just cut it back a little bit. And of course, you can, once you get it through the board, you can go ahead and uh, trim it a little bit more and make sure our heat sink stays on when we do this. So this is where you have to have five hands and it's going to go through this ground hole right here. And you're just going to put a little bit of solder on it to hold it in place. Now I'm going to flip it over so that I can solder from the back side because I want to make sure I'm not soldering from the top and we'll do our best not to smash anything here. And it's also labeled on the back side here. If I can get it to focus, which of course I can't, uh, ground is now over here. Let me make sure that's right. Here's our ground. Here's our D2. And then over here is our three volts. So we're going to put it in from the other side, but solder on this side here. So let's go ahead and do that now. This is again where you have to have three or four hands. So I'm going to put it through and I've pretend these wires. So it may make it a little bit easier to get them to work. But you can see it's coming through there now. And again, multiple hands here. Let's see if I can just get four or five hands to work at once. Helping hands are going to be a must for this. Oops, I pulled it completely out, didn't I? And we may need to use our other helping hand over there, but I'm going to give it a little bit of a bend there, and that'll just stay in there for by itself. Once you have one of these on here, you can kind of help hold the rest by doing it this way. All right, so I'm going to put a little bit of solder, not too much. You don't want to burn the board or burn the pans, pads off. Just till it solders the pad. There we go. So that's all you need to do there. And now you can see, if I can get it to focus here, that I have a little bit uh, of solder on there holding that ground on there. And it looks like, yep, sure enough, I put it in the wrong spot. So I stuck that in the D4 spot. So let's pull it back out and put it in the right spot without destroying the board, hopefully. All right, so that's out now. Fortunately, I didn't destroy anything doing that. This time we're gonna put it in the right spot. The ground that's where we want it we want it in the ground and then we'll go do the same thing give it a little bit of solder a little bit of heat and it's all we need there just a tap just a touch well i wish that would focus better I apologize for not focusing i'm just not sure why my camera is not focusing on it today all right so we have our heat sink on here and we'll we'll deal with that in a minute we're also going to cut these leads back a little bit so they're not 
um, so long. And now what we want to do is we want to take and do the same thing for our five volt or our three volt and also our, um, our data line. So this is our voltage line. We're going to go ahead and put the resistor through here. That's going to provide our data. I mean, our, uh, our voltage, but first let's make sure we put the heat sink on or the heat, sh heat shrink, heat wrap, stick that through there. I'm going to leave it a little bit long because I want this piece to reach over to the other side of the board over here to be able to get to that data line. I don't want it too short where it won't reach. So I'm going to make it super short. And then we'll do the same thing we did before. Give it just a little bit of a bump with the solder. Okay, that's all it needs right there. And of course, we'll cut these leads back. And then finally, one more piece of heat shrink goes on there. We'll bring this across the top of the board. Let me just take it out of the thing here to show you. We're going to bring this across the top of the board here. And we're going to put it over in uh, D2 here, which is our GPIO4 line. And this one I'm going to put as close as I can to it and just kind of bend it back. Stick it back in our, our helping hand here. And now we'll solder this one with just a touch of solder. All right, that's all we need to do. Okay, now we've got that solder. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the leads. Don't shoot yourself in the eye doing this. All right, and one more. We have our ground. And then we have our voltage over here and we have our data line over here. And if you look at the board here, we don't have any kind of electrical contact between these leads and any other metal on the board. We're gonna further that up by putting a little bit of heat shrink on that. This is a part where we get to play with fire. I'm gonna use a little, uh, one of these little flame deals. I'm just gonna heat it up a little bit. Not too much, just enough to get it done. All right, so now that one on the ground is pretty much melted on, shrunk the way it needs to be. And we'll just double check, make sure that this is in the right spot. We'll do the same thing here without getting too much heat on the resistor. So let's just shrink this up a little bit. Hopefully it's small enough to shrink. Just, just touching it, barely touching it. All right, that's good. And I'll do one more on the other side for the data line. This one's a little more tricky. Let's go underneath here. You may not see this on the camera very well. I'm going to go underneath this one. Just heat it up a little bit without melting any components or the resistor. Just tapping it. All right. So now we have our ground and our data line and our voltage. And we have this, this little resistor here drop resistor between the data line and the voltage. So this should be enough to get us uh, connected with these two sensors. And the next step is now to install the firmware on this ESP8266 and get it set up so that it can read the values from the two sensors. So we'll get started on that next. Now that we've got everything soldered up, I've gone ahead and connected my ESP8266 board to my Raspberry Pi USB port. Uh, you can also do this directly from your PC on a USB port as well. So the first thing to do is let's go over to our Raspberry Pi. And over here behind me, you'll see the plus sign here. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to give this device a name. Uh, I'm going to call it Attic Radio Monitor uh, ESP. So I know it's what it is. And then I'm going to put in my Wi-Fi SSID and my Wi-Fi password. And that way it'll, when it configures it, it'll connect to Wi-Fi. We'll click on next and choose the correct device. You can do this on an ESP32 as well as an ESP8266. Pretty much the way you solder it or where you solder it's the same. You just have to make sure you set the right configuration up. All right, but we're gonna use ESP8266, next. Now it's created the configuration. I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to install this just straight up the way it is now without any kind of configuration for anything else. So it's plugged into the computer running the dashboard. That's my computer or my Raspberry Pi, uh, USB zero. And now it's gonna go through the whole process of 
uh, flashing this with the ESP Home software. Now, I've made a whole video on ESP Home stuff, so you can uh, watch those. It tells you how to do this via the USB port on your computer, and also this method that I'm using here with the ESP uh, serial port, or directly from the serial port connection over USB on the Raspberry Pi. So we'll give this a second here to finish up, and then we will come back and we'll start working on some more of the configuration. Once you see this screen here, it's ready to go. So we can stop the logging here, and we're gonna go in and we're gonna do some editing of the configuration file so that we can actually utilize those Dallas sensors. Okay, so in order for this to work, we need to go in here and we need to make sure that we enable a couple of things. Now, all of this information is on the ESP Home website, which I'll link in the description below. The Dallas temperature sensor has a hub, uh, a component hub. And the reason why is you can add more than one sensor to the same input line, which is what I've done uh, in that when I showed you the, how I soldered that everything goes to the same input line, you're going to be able to tell the difference using the address of the sensor, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. But this Dallas component allows you to use your one wire temperature sensor. And so you have to define the hub and the hub is going to be where that actually is installed. So we installed that on GPIO, GPIO two or four. And if you look at this page here, it was D2, which corresponds to GPIO4. So we're going to go in here and we're going to set our hub up as GPIO4. And once we do that, we're going to see a listing of these sensors come across and we'll be able to tell which um, what the addresses are for the sensor. So let's start there. Let's start by adding the Dallas hub configuration in here. I'll just stick it up here at the top. And I'm going to change the pin to GPIO4 because that's the pin that we're going to run this on. I'm going to go ahead and save it. And, the, and I'm going to install it now. And the reason I'm doing that is because I need to get the, uh, the addresses of these particular sensors that are on there. And I can't do that until I actually view the log file. So once we save it and we do an install, and again, I'm doing this directly connected to the serial USB serial port. It'll show us the sensors that it finds on there. So you now see it's setting up a Dallas component. It's starting up the Wi-Fi, and it should detect both of those sensors. And here we are right here. So here are two sensors right here. We have these two values for addresses. I'm going to go ahead and copy these before this scrolls off the screen. So let me just control C that. And I'm going to put it on a little notepad so I can keep up with it. So I have both of my sensors and that's going to be important. So I'm going to stop this now that I have my two sensor values and looking back in here at our settings, I'm going to create two different sensors because I have two of those Dallas devices attached to the ESP board. So you need a platform, an address, and you need to give it a name so you, you can reference it in your setup later on. So we're going to take and just copy this and I'll change the appropriate values. We're going to go back in here. We're going to edit this ESP board. And under this section, I'll just stick it here. We're going to have a sensor here under the platform Dallas, which we defined above here. And my address is going to be the first address that I got for my first temperature sensor. And I'm going to call this one power supply. I'll just say power supply for short. And I'm going to paste another block exactly the same way. Oops. Let me go back and copy this right here. Copy it. And I'm going to put it down here under the same block. I'm going to copy the other address for the other sensor into this block as well. Paste it. And I'm going to give this an address or a name of uh, radio heatsink. I'm going to get rid of this space just for housekeeping. Now we're going to save this and I'm going to verify it this time to make sure that it looks the way it's supposed to or validate it. It'll come through here and everything looks good. And I'm going to go ahead and install it again via the USB serial connection. And it'll go through the same process and install it on there. And once it installs it and those sensors start sending data, then we should actually see the data values come across because we've given them addresses for the uh, ESP board to understand that that's something they should it should be looking at. It also takes a lot less time to compile it and write it this time because it's already done all the work. 
to build it. And already you can see here that we have power supply ascending state, this value, and radio heat sending state with one decimal of accuracy. Now the already the temperature sensors are working the way it's supposed to. And that's all you have to do to get it up and running on the ESP board. Now what we've done is we've created this in the ESP home dashboard here. So now that this part is done, we need to add the integration to Home Assistant so that it can see the values, the entities that it's going to be getting the data from. So you can either go into configuration and integrations here, or typically you'll get a notification that it sees these values. And it says new devices discovered. I'm gonna click on check it out. And it now sees this Attic Radio ESP8266, which I can then click on configure. It asks me if I want to add this one to Home Assistant. The answer is yes, submit. And now it's found it. You can give it an area. Uh, let's call it Attic for me. Okay, and so I'm finished. And now you should actually see uh, this device with two entities. So one device, two entities, and then our two entities are sensor power supply and sensor radio heat sink. Those are the two devices that we created. And now, finally, if you go to developer tools, or you could have clicked from where we were just a minute ago, but go to developer tools and then search for heat sink. You'll see that I have sensor radio heat sink with a value of 72 degrees because it's down here on the floor. It's not actually in the attic yet. And the other was um, power supply. And now you have sensor power supply. So you have both of these devices reporting into Home Assistant. Now I'm running Home Assistant uh, on my production uh, Odroid as well as this right here. So I will actually see these show up as discovered entities or discovered devices on my production Home Assistant. And for that, let me go over there now. And it will show me the same discovered devices here under notifications. So it's discovered a new device, check it out. Now that I've added that, like I did, like I showed you on the other one, we can go in here to developer tools and we can look at those same entities. So I'll look for heat sink. Here it is right here. The reason I bring it over into this one is now what we can do is we can go into Grafana under my environment or whatever dashboard you want to create or use. I'll just say uh, environment for this. And I will add uh, a new visualization, empty panel. It's going to be time series over here. And my measurement should be Fahrenheit if I go to the very bottom here. And my entity ID should be the heat sink. So here's my radio heat sink. I can plot that. And I can add an additional query for the same thing. So Fahrenheit. And my entity ID is going to be, what is this called? Power supply? There we go, power supply. And so now I have two different items here. Let me name them power supply. And this will have an alias of radio heat sink. Let's give it a title of um, radio system temps. And that'll be my title of my panel over here. What else do we want to change? I want to go ahead and make these lines. I want to set the uh, connect always values and I can set some thresholds later once I baseline this. I'll apply it now and go ahead and save the dashboard. And we'll just kind of zoom in a little bit here. Not a lot of data points yet because it was just turned on and added to Home Assistant, but you'll start seeing these data points here. And then you can start looking at the values coming in and being able to, do, to determine uh, what kind of course of action you want to do with it when you start seeing the values change. I'm gonna be plotting this stuff on here so I can kind of see what happens as the transmitter is transmitting and get an indication when there might be too high of a temperature on that transmitter. So let's go ahead and put them on the heat sinks where they're gonna rest and kind of start plotting some real temperatures. And then over time, we'll be able to see what happens here. So that's uh, it in a nutshell. You go from taking those Dallas temperature sensors uh, wiring them together using the resistor, getting them soldered to the ESP8266 board, getting the firmware updated to include the Dallas hub, and then define the sensors, and then start putting it into use. If you have any questions, drop those down in the comments down below. If you're not a channel member, 
please uh, consider joining the channel. And thank you to those that have already joined and support the channel here. Helps me buy these little devices and things that I can use to uh, showcase on the channel here. Uh, hit me up in Discord if you have any other questions, and we'll see you on the next video.